Hello and welcome to the Crafting Shares. I'm Ruth from Beltane Gifts and today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of these little guys. Now this is my very own toadstool gnome and I basically made him to go with the toadstools that I did in last week's video, which are up there. If you haven't seen those already, definitely check out the link in the description. They're great fun to make and they use some really interesting techniques. Big shout out to everyone who's subscribed so far. Thank you guys, you make my day and I really love it when you give me comments as well. So any comments that you want to give me, I'm listening. And any questions about anything I've done, if I haven't explained it properly, definitely pop it in the comments section. Sometimes things make sense to me, but when I try to explain them, they don't make sense to anyone else. So definitely pop it down in that comment section and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Enjoy the video. Okay, for this project we're going to need some finger protectors, something to work on. I've got this felting pad here, which is a cloth bag filled with rice, a selection of needle felting needles in handles. I've got a small, medium and large generic needle. We're going to need a needle and thread, a couple of beads. These are three millimeter round plastic beads. We're also going to need a selection of felting fiber. I've got two lots of different Corridale, one in eggshell and one in begonia and I've also got some Ida which is a German breed of hill sheep. Uh, this is slightly coarse so it's good for making 3D shapes and um, it felts together quite quickly which is great. So first off we're going to use some of the Ida just to make our base shape. So I'm not going to bother messing this up too much, I'm just going to swirl it all together into a bit of a ball. Pop on my finger protectors and using my big needle I'm just going to start stabbing the loose end in there just so it can't unravel and then I'm just going to work around just to create a ball shape so to do this I'm just imagining that there's a, a point right in the centre and my needle's always going to be aiming towards that point so just change the angle which you stab just so that you're always aiming towards that centre once you're starting to feel quite a bit of resistance to the needle, you can swap down to a slightly smaller one. So this is my medium needle and I'm just going to keep going over it just until the whole thing firms up. Okay, this is starting to feel much firmer. There's still plenty of giving it so I can keep shaping, but I think it's about ready for me to create a base. So I'm just going to start by just felting round little jabs close together to create the outline of a circle. You might need to go over it a couple of times for this to really show up. And then once you've got that circle, we're just going to stab straight down at a 90 degree angle. So if you just look from there and work our way over the whole of that circle, not going outside of the line, just within it. And what this should do is just create a flat side to it with a dome above. So this dome's going to be our mushroom cap. So I'm just going to go over the whole thing once more just to get it nice and firm. Now it's at this point, if you wanted to make your mushroom cap higher, you can do that. What you would do is, for me, I just like to have my flat end towards my left and then I will just stab up from that towards the curved top and I'll just keep working over the whole thing stabbing upwards towards that curve and what this does is because I'm working in one direction all the extra fiber is getting pushed that way okay so you can go over the base again just because as we've been felting bits have been pushed down so if you just go over that circle once more and that just gives us a nice firm area to attach the body to and just have a look at the overall shape it's gone a bit skew with so i'm just going to recurve the top of the toadstool there we go so you can roll it between your hands if you want i like to do this it just helps redistribute the fiber a little bit so now that this is nice and solid we can add our color to it so i'm just going to get some red what we're going to do is we're just going to create a nice big ball of red fiber by taking the fibre and just pulling it apart, making it nice and messy. The messier it is, the better, because it gives us a nice smoother finish. And I'm just going to rub it between my hands just to start that felting process and also to get rid of any sort of loose fibres. Then I'm just going to flatten it out a little bit and we're going to lay it over the top and we're just going to stab around the outside edge here near the base. What I'm doing is I'm just pulling down the fibre just to this edge and I'm going to keep rotating and just stabbing it into place. Okay, and then once you've gone completely round, what you can do is just smarten it up a little bit. Just make sure that um, all that fibre's right up to the edge. We want to get a nice smooth line if we can. OK, 
okay once that's all in place we're just going to do lots of little jabs over all the red section nice and close together we're just going to bring it all in and flatten it down just until we've got a nice smooth covering over the whole thing okay so take a look at the whole shape again just check out for any pieces that need a little bit of extra felting and just make sure you haven't changed the shape too much so once you've got it and you're happy with it we can add our spots so for our spots we just need some of our cream fiber we're just going to pull off small sections and what we're going to do is just roll them between finger and thumb to make a little bit of a ball then just pop the ball on your dome do a couple of stabs in the center just so it stays in place and then just work your way around the outside edge just catching those loose fibers and bringing them in so if you do have any loose fibers like i've got some here i'm just going to take the point of my needle and just really lightly run it around the outside just until the fibers get caught on the needle and then i'm just going to stab them into place and that should just help stop these little wispy bits so I'm going to do this all over just until we've got a full coverage of them. There we go, so I've added all the dots now. So we're ready to start adding the body. Now for this I'm going to be using some of this Ida again. And again I'm just going to be using a section of it and we're going to start by just winding it into a bit of a ball and then just going to place it against the cap and we're just going to stab round in a circle until it's attached. We don't want to go all the way to the edge, just want to leave a little bit of white showing and then we're just going to stab towards the center just until it's nice and firmly attached and i'm going to keep going around just stabbing inwards just in that same circle and what will happen is all the fiber that's connected is going to start balling up and becoming more solid and once it's nicely and attached we can just go over the whole thing and just bring it in go once that's starting to firm up it should look like this and i'm just going to go over the base now and i'm pinching it between finger and thumb just to hold the fiber in place and i'm just going to stab straight down just to firm it up a bit and then just round the outside edge again just because i've pushed fiber down so now i just want to lock it into place there we go now it doesn't look pretty but don't worry we're not going to actually be seeing this bit this is just something that we can attach other pieces to so have a look at your little toadstool now decide if there's a way that you prefer direction that you prefer the look of and we're just going to choose where the front's going to be as it just comes up a little bit here this will be my front and what i'm going to do is just grab some of my eggshell colored corridale pull off a section mess it all up and just roll it into a ball go and we're just going to place it just under the, the lip there and just stab just in the middle and just going to keep pulling the fibre up and stabbing just until it's nice and firmly attached go and then we're just going to work around the outside edge just in a circle this is going to be our nose so we're just going to do a little circle and that circle is going to be the size the nose is going to be if that makes sense so we're just going to go around we want to get as close to the top of the toadstool as we can without actually stabbing into that okay and then we're just going to work our way around it and just create a little ball so lots of little jabs close together to create this this is really starting to firm up so I'm just going to swap over to my finer needle and just keep going there we go so we've got our little nose or big nose in this case there so what we want to do as well with this fiber is to create some feet so it's using the same technique we're just going to create two balls of fiber this time though so I find it easier just to create one big ball mess it up and then split it into two and try and get them kind of even if you can it's much easier to do this now than it is to work out later how much fiber you used okay and um, what we're going to do is take one of the balls and put it to the side and same as before we're going to do a couple of stabs towards the the bottom we want to get it quite close just to the bottom here just to anchor it and then we're just going to pull the fiber in and what we want to create is kind of a line going from the center here outwards just diagonally up towards the head and the same on the other side and then a little curve just underneath which is going to be the heel just going to move this upwards slightly sticking to the same line 
and then this is going to be our heel and the sides of our foot so this is going to be the front of the foot so we're just going to stab straight down on this area just to flatten it a bit take it slow though we want to leave a bit of squishiness so that we can shape everything and just bring the sides in as you need now this section here is going to be the heel of the foot so we want to kind of round this off sorry same round here for the ankle I'm just going to bring that in okay so the toes and everything are going to be up here so this is going to be the ball of the foot so we're just going to do a little line here and just round off around the edges so we're creating kind of an oval shape um, there's a little bit of a line just there and this rest of this fibre is going to be our toes so what I'm going to do is just stab from here towards the foot and just bring this down so that this, the toes stick out more so if I just use my thumb just to hold the fibre back because what we want to do is create like a flap of fibre that we can shape so now we've got our fibre what we're going to do is we're just going to do some toes by just doing some little lines so we're going from where we did the line here all the way to the back just little lines in between uh, I think we'll just go for the four toes I think going for five toes would just be too many and then you can just go over the whole thing just keep moving things in until it starts to look right there's our little foot we're going to do the same on the other side and then we'll be ready to add the hair so our feet are now attached it's time to add some facial hair and for that I'm going to be using the eider again so I'm just going to lightly grasp the roving about midway down and just pinch and pull just fibre off the end there and this gives us the natural length of the fiber and this is important because what we want to do is um, attach it in the middle and we don't want pieces coming off so just make sure when you lay it out that uh, all the fibers are about the same length okay so what we're going to do is take our length of roving we're going to lay it so that the middle of the the fiber is just under the nose there going to lay it just across and with our needle we're just going to stab from one side to the other just catching the fibre and I'm just using the side of the nose as a guide and I'm just stabbing round just underneath it and I'm working backwards and forwards I'm only holding one end I'm letting the other end be loose because we want that bit to get sucked in there we go so that should be nicely attached what you do now is just fold the rest of the fibre down and just make sure it bunches up a little bit under the nose we're just going to stab again just to make sure it's doubly well attached there we go so this is going to be our our beard and we can trim this later now to give the effect of a mouth we want to add a moustache as well so as before we're just going to grab the eider pull just a section off again make sure it's all about the same length and we're going to find kind of the midsection again and this time we're going to lay it across under the nose and then we're just going to stab just up and down just under the nose there and you might want to go over this a couple of times because we want to make sure it's really well attached and you can see there the fibre starting to get pulled in because I'm stabbing in the same place that's good we want that to happen it just means that more fibre is getting tucked up and under okay so when that's done we can just bring it down and this is going to be our moustache so if I trim everything now I'm just going to get the scissors and we want the beard to be kind of in line with the feet the bottom of the heels there so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a couple of little cuts one going one way one going up the other just to give it a bit of shape and with the moustache we're just going to give that a little cut as well 
bit of an angle and what we're going to do with the moustache just rub between finger and thumb and just felt it together a little bit really define it there we go now you can play with this quite a bit if you wanted to just really get everything where you want it but I think that'll do for me for the time being now what we want to do as well is add some hair along the back now this is going to be done in exactly the same way that we added the beard so we're just going to grab sections and pull them off and then we're just going to lay it just over find the midpoint we want the midpoint to be just in line with the base of the hat hold it in place and what we're going to do is we want to stab it so that it's just past the nose just to the side of it there and I'm going to stab from one side and work my way round just to the other don't worry if you can't use your fibre and get it to spread all that way you can just add more now we're just going to work our way backwards and forwards a little bit just to make sure it's really firmly attached and then just like with the beard we're going to fold this hair down and then just stab it in again along the fold and you want to really kind of tuck it in there up and under the hat there we go then once that's in place you can actually go over it with your needle just to kind of blend the fibres together just really lightly I'm going to tuck it just behind the foot we want to be able to see that little foot sticking out and then we can just give it a little trim again I want it kind of in line with the feet now because the heels of the feet stick out just a bit more than the, the bum area what I'm going to do is just use some of the, the bits of fibre that I've cut off from the hair and beard and just roll them up together just add it just on the bum area there and just carefully stab it into place because again I've forgotten my finger protectors just take it slow and we just want to flatten it out a bit just so that our little man can sit properly this is also quite a nice use of our extra bits of fibre we've cut off which we possibly couldn't use in another project and this way we don't waste anything okay so I'm just going to test that out make sure he sits does so we can just go over the hair again if you find like me it's sticking out just a little bit what you can do is just go over it with your needle and just give a couple of little stabs just to tack it into place and because we did the body in the same color fiber it's going to hide everything which is really great and same with the beard and mustache I'm going to hold the mustache out of the way for this just do a couple of little stabs with the beard I'm going to trim this just a little bit as well twizzle the moustache again and then we're just going to tack that there we go now if you wanted to add eyes we've got our needle and thread and our little beads and what we're going to do is just in the back I'm going to do a couple of little stitches so I'm going to come in just from the side right in the hairline there pull the thread through until it's tucked inside the hat then we're going to do just a couple of little stitches you could do this also before we add the hair I just like to add my eyes last go okay, so we've done a couple of stitches there we're going to come through the back of the head and come out just at the side of the nose in between the nose and the hat there there we go I'm going to pop the bead onto the thread and then sew back through to where we did our stitches do another little stitch then back through to the other side and just do the same again go another little stitch and just going to come out of the side of the hat pull tight and just snip off any extra cotton now if your stitches are showing like mine all you have to do is just take your needle and we're just going to catch some of that hair and tuck it up over the top there and just felt it into place over the top of the stitches just so that they're hidden and there you go now it might need a little bit of zhuzhing just to get it how you want it but once you're happy he's ready to go on a little display if you want or on a key ring whatever you prefer so I hope you've enjoyed the video if you have be sure to give it a thumbs up if you're enjoying the content in general and you'd like to watch more of it be sure to click on that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out on future videos stay warm stay safe and I will see you next time bye